Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 59 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilays, coming to you today from YouTube. And today I definitely cannot start by saying I think we should start with smelling a perfume because we're not going to be smelling any perfume in this particular episode because you will have noticed straight away here that what I have got next to me are candles and not perfumes. However, let us just proceed in the usual way. Let me make sure that everything is all right on the tablet. Uh, volume down because I don't particularly want to hear the sound of my own voice. Um, uh, and a, a, a few sort of usual housekeeping things. Uh, we're going to try and do two episodes in this live session today. So usual drill when this one finishes and when it's been uploaded to YouTube and I can change the scenery a little bit, all of which takes around 10 minutes. We are going to come back with a perfume video and actually we're going to be smelling some new releases or at least one new release from Armani Privé. So that should be very exciting. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. If you have tuned in live, please feel free to ask questions, leave comments, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. But also, even if you're not watching live, feel free to ask a question or leave a comment. And also for the benefit of those people who watch the recording and don't watch live, I will try to stick a link to the Armani uh, video at the uh, in the video description for this video and, and vice versa, if you see what I mean. So, candles. Uh, Hello from Puerto Rico, says Abdel Sarkis. Thank you very much for tuning in. And hello, Persele, says Ashfaq. Big, a huge hello to you as well. For the next few minutes, um, I would like us to chat a little bit about home sense. Hello again, Midnight from Indonesia. Really, really sorry. This is the only time I could do it. I remember buying the Diptyque 2019 Valentine's candle based on your review, says April. Was that was that was that one of those ones? It must have been the two roses, right? See, I've still got my. Um, oh, Damascena. Um, it must have been one of those ones. Yes, <laughs> good, fantastic. Um, I, d d d Christmas, sorry, scented candles. Hello to everybody. Uh, they're gorgeous, says Aperol Spritz. Yes, they absolutely are, the, the, the Diptyque ones. There are a lot of scented candles that are purchased as Christmas gifts. Um, and I did toy with the idea of doing a, um, scented candle episode in the run-up to Christmas, but actually I find myself using them more in this period, after Christmas, when you know the festivities are over, the lights have been packed away, but you are still very much in the middle of winter, um, the nights are still quite long, the skies tend to be grey, at least where I live, and and it's now when you know we 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 we, we don't have all the 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 glitter and 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 the, and the illumination of Christmas that I turned to turn to these guys and I just thought it might be interesting to share with you some of the candles that we have been burning at Maison Persolais lately and also to find out from you um, what are some of the scented candles that you turn to so um, I, I should say even though I probably it's probably bad luck to mention this or something this remains my favourite Christmas candle but we won't talk about that today because you know we've had Christmas this is the Joyeux Noël candle from Frédéric Mal, with a scent composed by Dominique Ropion. Just the most amazing sweet pine scent. Um, it, if, you, if you shut your eyes, you really would believe that, that you've got a huge Christmas tree in front of you. Sabra says hello from Seattle, hello to you as well. But I'd like to start with this, because this is a candle that I actually got before Christmas, and you can see that I've certainly given it a very very good workout and that is because I really loved it and so does well continue to love it so does Madame Persolais this is I don't know if you can see there this is from the brand um, Saint Jardin they in the run-up to Christmas released um, three candles I believe I have got a press release so we'll take a look at the press release very very quickly and and each of the candles corresponds to a perfume so it's not as though they're brand new scents fragrances that they came up with for the candles this is the one uh, called Tiger by Her Side, and those of you who know the brand will be aware that there was a perfume called Tiger by Her Side. This really was love at first sniff. You may have made out, even though the, the, the typeface is quite small there, they've actually got a very, very handy little cheat sheet, cheat sentence of, of descriptors there. Uh, you may be aware then the tiger by her side is an amber scent and as it says here it contains a, a sort of rose note patchouli and incense but this oh. 
and, and I am swooning and I have you know there's a good reason why I'm swooning but the thing as well with candles is that you never quite know what sort of projection what sort of throw they're going to have um, until you burn them because a lot of candles can smell great when you open the packaging or you smell them in a in a shop but you don't really know how they're going to project and this one smells fantastic when you bury your nose into it preferably when the wick hasn't been lit but it also really really knows how to fill a room so whoever has composed the scent for this absolutely knew what they were doing about projection because as many of you will be aware when it comes to making a candle scent you can't always necessarily just take the formula the composition that was made for the fine fragrance and pour it into wax because suddenly you will find that actually various components behave differently that elements which may have been quite prominent in the fine fragrance suddenly get buried beneath something or other in the candle and you also maybe decide that perhaps you want to change the emphasis and maybe even though it may have been quite appropriate for one facet to stick out in the fine fra fragrance it just doesn't feel feel right for it to stick out in um in the candle but but this works this this really really works it 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 sings a very very clear uh, tune melody from from top to bottom it is a very very striking amber scent um, what does come out mainly is that vanillic but smoky feel that you expect from uh, <coughs> from an amber composition really really beautiful incense note it just it just seems to turn the temperature up um, as soon as you light it and that animalic suggestion in the name Tiger by her side is, is, is very very appropriate as well. So this has been a hit and um, I'm very very curious to know what the other two candles in the collection may smell like because one of them particularly I remember th uh, being quite impressed with the perfume. Mr. Comment Ashwak says I remember you covered one or two perfumes from that brand a few months ago. One was a tuberose one. Yes, I'm pretty sure that was the the Jaipur one, right? Jaipur Chant. All their perfumes are made by Carlos Benaim. There you go. So, you know, a Carlos Benaim Amber is probably going to be a great thing. Let's take a very, very quick look at the press release. Um, as it says, Sana Jardin will launch its first candle collection this December. Well, they did, December 2019. The socially conscious fragrance house will unveil luxury candles in three of its best-selling scents, Tiger by Her Side, uh, Révolution de la Fleur, and a Jaipur Chant. The decadent candles, there is something quite decadent about this one for sure, contain 100% vegetable wax and are free of phthalates, artificial colorants, parabens and formaldehydes. Each scent is designed to transport and seduce whilst supporting positive change. The candles are housed in recyclable glass and exude nature's most exotic aromas. And this is what they have to say about Tiger by Her Side. This candle incarnation of Tiger by Her Side will fill your home with a warm, inviting notes of amber and essential oil accord associated with emotional clarity and inner strength. Yeah, and a little bit of sort of action between the sheets as well, surely. <laughs> Emotional clarity. Enhanced with enveloping Moroccan rose and calming Indonesian patchouli, this beguiling blend treads a fine line between masculine and feminine, so the entire household will fall under its spell. <laughs> Fair enough. The name is inspired by the high priestess of ancient Egypt, said to be so powerful uh, they could walk with tigers alongside them. Ideal as a house housewarming gift for a stylish habitat or just a perfect candle to curl up with and disentangle from a hectic day. It, it definitely does create that feeling of as soon as you walk into a space that's been perfumed with it, you just want to pause and take a breath and think, oh, okay, maybe things weren't quite so bad as I imagined them to be. The other two, like I said, Révolution de la Fleur is um, an ylang ylang perfume with jasmine and sandalwood, according to this. I haven't smelt the candle. And Jaipur Chant is the uh, the tuberose one. That one I would particularly be interested to smell because, yes, as, as, as you pointed out, um, the perfume was pretty good stuff. Um, and for those of you who are interested, these retail at £48 or $65 per candle. So that's that one. <coughs> the other one, let me just go back to the feed to make sure I haven't missed anything. 
The other, the other is, a, is, is a new candle brand as well. You can just about make out two of them here. I think the brand is called La Montagna. This is uh, one of their candles called First Light. They've, they've got <coughs> quite a lot more than two. I'm only aware of these two. So we've got First Light here. And if I just bring out the other one as well, this is called Alfredo's Cafe from La Montagna. Um, this one was not so taken with. You can see at the bottom here it says that it's meant to contain notes of black tobacco, coffee and brandy. For me this was a kind of take it or leave it. Druba says I made it just to say hello. Have you have you done your test yet? Everybody everybody wish you luck or or have you done the test? Send good thoughts. Thank send good thoughts either for the test or for the result, okay? Um this one uh, do you burn agar wood chips as an alternative? Says so Sometimes I do, yes, and I love burning incense sticks. I still have a few incense uh, sticks that I bought in Lucknow from, from Sugandhko. Um, oh, and Peggy says, me too, just made it. Greetings from Malaysia. Thank you very much for tuning in. I love uh, burning some of the Japanese incense sticks that I, that I uh, got the one and only time I went to. Um, Japan. Oh, Druva says, not yet, but glad to see a Latizon perfume or candle. I've been thinking of grabbing one. Uh, I am going to talk about this one because I love this one too. <clears throat> uh, so yes, uh, um, the, the, the one thing that I suppose I'm not crazy about is reed diffusers, purely because you can't switch them off. You know, I, I, get, I get that they are a much safer alternative to candles and obviously you should never leave a candle unattended and there really is a good reason to not leave a candle unattended because you never know what a candle may do and apparently in the UK one of the main main reasons why the fire service are called out to house fires is because of, of, of um, unattended candles but, but personally I'd rather attend to a candle then have a reed diffuser because once you open a re reed diffuser, that, that that's it. You you know you've got to live with it. So, as I was saying, this is supposed to be black tobacco, coffee, and brandy. But to me, it it, it doesn't have the darkness or the mystery that I would associate with those materials, and it it's just it, it it's just quite a sort of clean um, synthetic musk scent. But this one, um, first light, it it was just a revelation. Um, I'm not ignoring comments, by the way. I'll, I'll come back to them as, in a sec. It's just sometimes I think I need to carry on with my flow because it gets really, really annoying for people watching if I keep responding to comments. Uh, this one says wild mountain flora. Um, but it, And it made me think that, it made me realise rather, I should say, that yes, a lot of the time in the dead of winter, what we want to burn are things like the Sana Jardin, the tiger by her side, because they are warm and enveloping and, and mysterious and um, cocoon-like. But also, actually, sometimes you want smells that remind you of the approach of spring or a really, really crisp, bright, sunny morning and make you think, make you realise that, that, that winter will eventually pass. You know, the days are getting longer now. And this is just that. This This is just... The, the such a note perfect green but not galbanum green you know freshly cut grass um, and sharp almost aniseed like um, herbs it's very very herbal because of a fennel note and you know fennel and aniseed have facets in common and it's it, it 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 it's just it's just the scent of approaching optimism. I mean, what was it? T.S. Eliot said that April April is the the cruelest month, but this sort of makes you realise that yes, okay, those buds trying to 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 break through the ground do have a kind of pain about them and a cruelty to them, but but also actually they will lead to something beautiful, and um, this makes you realise that even in the dead of winter there is hope. Now worth taking a few minutes out to talk about the brand because it's, it's an interesting brand and I, and I uh, if, if you are interested in or fascinated by how brands begin the story of this one is is great uh, you'll be able to find it if you google it it's called La Montagna They're, they have their uh, their story um, on their site I'll read you a little bit about it it says welcome to La Montagna a range of gorgeous scented candles inspired by the founders new life in a Spanish mountain village Fill your home with warm fragrances of the Mediterranean. They're all inspired by Spain somehow. 
On our mountain, at first light, there's a heavenly fragrance in the air. Before anyone starts an engine or lights a fire, the air is clear and still and silent. The first breath of the day carries the perfume of wild mountain herbs, fennel, rosemary, mountain pepper. That is, by the way, the smell that inspired this one and intoxicating rock rose. The alchemy of these fragrances, blended naturally on the, breeves, on the breeze, weaves a magical spell. The inspiration for our first candle, which was this one. La Montagna candles conjure up memories and dreams of the Mediterranean and of holidays in the sun. They are guaranteed not only to smell wonderful, but also to look great on the mantelpiece. Well, okay, fair enough. Each candle bears its own unique and collectible label in the style of a nostalgic 1930s travel poster. La Montagna candles truly are an affordable luxury. And there's quite a bit about the founders and the fact that I haven't checked this out, that they have kept a blog that follows their story from being Londoners to being the inhabitants, residents of a Spanish village, from the rat race to the goat track, it says. Um, th there are several other ones, as I said. Um, these are the only two that I've tried. And they're also, I suppose, fairly affordable because this one on their website is, is £36. Um, I can't tell you any more about this one from the website. Yeah, like, like that first blurb says, fennel, bergamot, rosemary, mountain, pepper, and rock rose. That sharpness, it has got that sharpness of just how you, how you would like a morning in the mountains to feel. You know, this is, this is like your dream morning in the mountains. I'm aware I've missed a few comments, so let's just go back. Uh, love the Shoyedo, says Ashfaq. Oh, this is ja going back to Japanese incense. I think the Perfume Society had this brand of candles as a gift with purchase, says Peggy. Winter orange or something like that, really. Yes, I think there is one like that, so you're probably right, Peggy. There's been a steady rise in candle sales in the UK, says Ashfaq, so kind of makes sense about the fire hazards. Oh, interesting, okay. Ali Jabba says, my favourite is Russian Nights by Frederick Mal. Have you tried it? Yes, but not not for a, for a long time. Um, I do find a lot of... Um, Mal can well, I, I generally I find Frederick Mal candles really expensive, and I had a, a an unpleasant experience with one of them. The um in in terms of it not burning properly. I mean that's a whole other thing as well with candles because when they start funneling, that can be really annoying. Sometimes they funnel because you haven't burnt them properly, but sometimes even if you have burnt them properly, they start funneling, and that gets really really frustrating. Uh, so so I can't remember that one, but I think. Russian Nights, the perfume was actually composed by Sophia Groisman, if memory serves. Uh, and Ashfaq says, is this the Brexit effect? Who knows? Who knows? Don't. Do not. That, that word is not allowed. Tomasz uh, tunes in. Hello from terribly smoky Katowice. You don't have to be an ood lover to appreciate the unwelcoming atmosphere of my hometown tonight. Why? What's going on in Katowice tonight? Persilase is talking about a scented topic. Ali Jabra says they're very expensive, Frederick Mal candles, yes. But it was the only one worth purchasing for me. And yes, they burn weird, similar to diptyques. Ah, so you had a, 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 an experience like that as well. Interesting, interesting. Usually the brands will tell you that you have done something wrong. So either you didn't trim the wick, like that wick, for instance, will just have, you can't really see there, but it'll have to be trimmed a little bit before you light it. And you have to center the wick. And, you know, you have to kind of clap three times and turn clockwise three times and then anti-clockwise once to make sure the candle burns properly. People need to remember to trim their wicks after each burning. Yes, yes, yes. But most of us do remember, Peggy, and things still go wrong. <laughs> but anyway... And um, I would also like to mention uh, L'Artisan. Not splitting the atom, says Ali Jabo. Uh, in terms of what? No, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, as in, as in it's not rocket science. I still think that L'Artisan's candles are amongst the best on the market. And I was really, really hoping that when they went through their rebrand, you know, when they sort of went for this... Um, and snuff don't blow, says Peggy. Yes, I, I, I also have a special little, what's that thing called, that wick dipping tool. I do it all properly, trust me, but it still doesn't work. But anyway, take Peggy's advice. She, she tells no lies. I was very pleased that they retained their candles because um, I, I think they're superb. And I'm, and I'm also pleased that some of their candles, if not all of them actually, I'm not sure, are available in a smaller size. Sorry, says Peggy. No, don't apologize. It's fine. Please don't apologize. Um, I still have a few. Oh, Latizon used to have a candle that smells like tea for two. Yes, they did. Yeah, they did. Um, and I think they still do because didn't they change the name of the candle to tea and gingerbread? 
Um, hello from Dubai, been a while catching you live, says Reza. Thank you very much for tuning in. I am pretty sure that is the one that was called Te et Pan de Peace or something like that, which was the T for two, because they, they, they usually change their names. So this one that I'm holding here, the candle is called Voyage to Constantinople. And so if you know the range, you will immediately work out that actually then this is the candle of Traverse du Bosphore, which uh, the scent of which was composed by uh, Bertrand, Bertrand <coughs> excuse me, Duchaufour, really, really beautiful candle, came so close to making it onto my list of the best perfumes of the decade. And this stuff, it's, and this burns really, really well. I mean, Lantisan candles, when it comes to a candle, I will allow, allow myself to use the P word, the performance word. These ones do perform. Um, I, I have yet to be disappointed by a Lartisan candle, actually. I'm trying to think of one that, uh, even even um, their Mimosa one, which I think still exists. Um, uh, mimosa is a hard smell to do in a candle because the whole thing about it is, is that it's subtle. Mimosa is a smell that you sort of want to just catch on the breeze and become aware of it almost the split second after it's disappeared. Um, <clears throat> But that Lartisan Mimosa candle did such a great job of conveying the, the delicacy of the smell um, and the gentleness and yet filling a room with it. Um, so these are great and for those who are not aware, this particular fragrance is, 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 is a really, really touching somehow, very sweet it has to be said, evocation of Istanbul. Uh, Duchaufour was in <coughs> inspired to compose it. Do you remember, it was, it was coming up to 10 years ago now when the Icelandic volcano, whose name I am not even going to attempt to pronounce, erupted and caused chaos across the whole of Europe. Flights were grounded and Duchaufour found himself stuck in Istanbul. As it happens, Madame Persilaise and I were stuck in Istanbul then as well, but you know, I didn't know Duchaufour then. It was only years later that we discovered that we were stuck there at the same time and he was inspired to make this fragrance. And so it contains an iris note, a leather note, a suggestion of a tulip note, and the most gorgeous sprinkling of um, icing sugar to suggest um, Turkish delight, you know, Rahat Lukum. And it's, it's, it's a really, really interesting sweet leather, which is not something that you expect, but it, it's definitely got the leather of the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul, but it's also got the sugar and it's also got the iris, and it, it, it remains one of one of the best from, um, from L'Artisan, I think. Uh, comments, 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 so... Uh, Emma says, also love the pan de piece and still have empty container of their winter candle that I sniff at intervals. Isn't it really satisfying actually smelling empty candle containers? Traverseur du Bosphore is amazing, says April. It evokes an image. Now I'll have to hunt down the candle. Yeah, you should. Hello, says Anna. Hello to you as well. Reza says, where did you get those candles from? I've never seen L'Artisan here except for a handful in Dubai Mal many years ago. Oh, I don't know. Maybe they maybe they don't ship. You know, maybe they don't stock them in you know, for the Middle Eastern market. I'd, they're they're just they're just available um, with wherever Latisan fragrances are available here and and on their website. I mean, maybe you could see if they would ship to the UAE. So can't help you. Sorry, Anna says I got gifted a candle from Maison de la uh, oh is it Maison de la Bougie called Rye. It smells identical to Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille. Oh, interesting. In other words, it smells pretty good. So, I think that's it for candles. Just sharing with you the smells of Maison Persilaise here in winter 2020. Uh, so, like I said, and obviously no, no blotter update for these. Uh, thank you very much for tuning into this episode. Uh, if you are watching live and if you have got time to stick around. Oh, did you try MFK Mon Beau Sapin? Um, no, is the answer to that one. I'm not sure I even know that one. Um, YouTube just needs to do its thing for a few minutes and upload its video. I need to put these away and bring something new out. But if you are able to stick around, please do come back in a few minutes for the next episode, the 60th episode, where we will be smelling some new stuff from Armani Privé. But until then, take care. Bye.